Okay. <laughs> hey, boss. There's a dame here to see you. How did William Frawley go from loved to hated? The actor who played Fred Mertz on I Love Lucy often portrayed an intense irritation towards his wife, adding humor to his character. There was a deeper, more serious reason behind this trait. Frawley had a tough struggle with alcohol addiction, and this was something that a lot of people in Hollywood knew about. His battle with drinking wasn't his only challenge. Before joining I Love Lucy, Frawley faced many setbacks in his personal and professional life. He was going through a failing career and had been through a divorce, and things seemed pretty uncertain for him at that time. Despite these struggles, Desi Arnaz, who co-produced I Love Lucy with his wife Lucille Ball, saw something in Frawley. Arnaz believed Frawley could bring something special to the character of Fred Mertz, and he offered him the role. This turned out to be a huge opportunity for Frawley, coming at a time when he really needed a break. Playing Fred Mertz gave him a chance to turn his career around and make a lasting impact on television. But what was happening behind the scenes? Frawley had actually started his showbiz career way back in 1914, performing in vaudeville with his wife Edna Louise Brute. Together, they did a comedy act called Frawley and Louise, until their marriage ended in 1927. Besides vaudeville, Frawley also appeared on Broadway several times, and in 1916, he signed with Paramount Studios. Over the following decades, he acted in more than 100 films. Recently, more details about Frawley's struggles with alcohol and addiction have come to light. These new insights help us understand what he was really going through during those difficult times. Join us as we explore what might have been going on in Frawley's mind and why people started to form a negative view of him. Early Life William Frawley was born in Burlington, Iowa, and was the second of four children in his family. His parents were Michael A. Frawley and Mary E. Brady Frawley. Growing up, Frawley attended Catholic schools and was involved in his church, where he sang in the choir at St. Paul's Catholic Church. As a young man, he found himself interested in acting and began taking small roles in local theater productions at the Burlington Opera House. He also performed in different amateur shows, but his very religious mother didn't approve of these activities and tried to discourage him from continuing. The Frawley's first job was quite different from his later career in show business. He started out working as a stenographer at the Union Pacific Railroad office in Omaha, Nebraska. After two years, he decided to move to Chicago, where he found a job as a court reporter. Despite his mother's disapproval, Frawley was still drawn to performing and ended up landing a singing role in a musical comedy called The Flirting Princess. To make his mother feel a little better about his career choice, he later moved to St. Louis, Missouri to work for another railroad company. However, Frawley was still unhappy with his regular job and continued to dream of becoming a professional entertainer. He briefly formed a vaudeville act with his brother Paul, but their mother eventually persuaded Paul to return to Iowa. Frawley, though, wasn't ready to give up. He wrote a script called Fun in a vaudeville agency, which he managed to sell for more than $500, a pretty big sum of money at the time. After this early success, Frawley moved to Denver, where he worked as a singer in a cafe. It was there that he teamed up with a pianist named Franz Roth, and together they created a vaudeville act called A Man, A Piano, and A Nut. They eventually took their act to San Francisco. During his time in vaudeville, Frawley helped make several songs popular, including My Mammy, My Melancholy Baby, and Carolina in the Morning. Many years later in 1958, Frawley revisited his vaudeville days by recording an album called Bill Frawley Sings the Old Ones, featuring some of the songs from his earlier stage performances. Career William Frawley eventually made it to Broadway, where he made his debut in 1925 with a musical comedy called Mary Mary. He found early success on the stage, and in 1932 he landed his first dramatic role as Owen O'Malley, a press agent in the original production of 20th Century, written by Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur. Frawley continued to act in different dramatic roles until 1933. Frawley's entry into film started with a couple of short silent films in 1916, followed by three more short roles. However, it wasn't until 1933 that he decided to fully dive into a movie career, starring in several short comedy films and the feature musical Moonlight and Pretzels, produced by Universal Studios. This led him to move to Los Angeles, where he signed a seven-year contract with Paramount Pictures. Frawley found steady work as a character actor across many genres, including comedies, dramas, musicals, westerns, and romances. He played in notable roles like a political advisor in the classic Miracle on 34th Street, where he warned Judge Harper about the political backlash of ruling against Santa Claus. 
He also played the baseball manager in Alibi Ike, 1935, the wedding host in Charlie Chaplin's Monsieur Verdoux, 1947, and a tough insurance investigator in My Home in San Antonio. Frawley also appeared in two films with James Cagney, Something to Sing About and Kiss Tomorrow Goodbye. By 1951, at the age of 64, Frawley had appeared in over 100 films. However, roles were becoming harder to come by. So when he heard that Desi Arnaz and Lucille Ball were casting for a new television sitcom, he was eager to try out for the part of Fred Mertz, the grumpy landlord. Frawley surprised Lucille Ball by calling her directly to ask about his chances, even though they didn't really know each other well. While both Ball and Arnaz were interested in having him join the cast, CBS executives were hesitant because of Frawley's reputation for heavy drinking and unpredictable behavior. Arnaz warned Frawley about these concerns and gave him a strict ultimatum. Any unprofessional behavior, like showing up drunk or missing work for any reason besides illness, would result in immediate firing. Despite these worries, Frawley proved to be dependable on set. He always showed up on time, sober, and ready to work. He learned his lines quickly and earned the trust of his co-workers, eventually becoming good friends with Arnaz. Frawley had his own way of learning lines. He would read through the script with the rest of the cast, then throw away all but his own parts, focusing only on his dialogue. I Love Lucy premiered on CBS on October 15, 1951, and was an instant hit. The show originally ran as a half-hour series for six years, before changing to hour-long specials called The Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Show, later renamed The Lucy Desi Comedy Hour, from 1957 to 1960. On I Love Lucy, Frawley's on-screen wife, Ethel Mertz, was played by Vivian Vance. Although their characters had great chemistry, Frawley and Vance didn't get along behind the scenes. Vance didn't like playing the wife of a man who was 22 years older than her, and Frawley took offense to her complaints, leading to an ongoing feud between them. He once sarcastically said, She's one of the finest girls to come out of Kansas, but I often wish she'd go back there. Frawley was a big New York Yankees fan, and it was even written into his I Love Lucy contract that he wouldn't have to work during the World Series if the Yankees were playing. Because of this, he missed two episodes of the show when the Yankees made it to the series, which they did almost every year during that time, except for 1954 and 1959. Frawley's work on I Love Lucy earned him five Emmy nominations in a row for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series from 1953 to 1957. The show itself, which premiered in 1951 and ran until 1957, has become a beloved classic, known for its groundbreaking comedy and for featuring Lucille Ball as a leading comedic actress. Fred Mertz, Frawley's character on I Love Lucy, had a detailed backstory that added depth to his role. Fred was born and raised on a farm in the Midwest and was of Irish descent, with at least one brother. His background in vaudeville was an important part of his character, as he had performed across the country before retiring to New York City. Fred was also a World War I veteran and was married to Ethel Mertz, played by Vivian Vance. Their marriage was marked by good-natured arguments. Ethel often called Fred a fat old goat, while Fred referred to her as the bottomless pit, a nod to her love of food. They celebrated their wedding anniversary on May 3rd. Fred was known for being very frugal, mostly because of the impact of the Great Depression, but he was always willing to invest in something that seemed promising, like a diner or oil stocks. In his younger years, Fred Mertz was part of a vaudeville duo known as Mertz and Kurtz, with his friend Barney Kurtz. They were known for their tap dancing and clever banter. Later on, Fred continued his vaudeville career with his wife, Ethel Potter. Fred also had experience as a Golden Gloves boxer, and in one episode of I Love Lucy, he is seen wearing a Golden Gloves 1909 sweater, hinting at his boxing past. After their entertainment careers, Fred and Ethel retired and bought a brownstone apartment building in New York City. When Lucy and Ricky Ricardo moved into the building in the early 1940s, the two couples quickly became close friends. Even though they were retired, Fred and Ethel would occasionally guest on Ricky's show. The dynamic between the Mertzes and the Ricardos added a lot of humor to I Love Lucy. When Ricky upset Lucy, she would often team up with Ethel to come up with a plan for revenge. Ethel, in turn, might tell Fred, leading to him joining forces with Ricky to counter their wives' schemes. Fred's frequent phrase, oh for corn's sake, captured his exasperation in these situations. The character of Fred Mertz, as portrayed by William Frawley, along with some of the show's costumes, are celebrated at the Lucille Ball Desi Arnaz Center in Lucille Ball's hometown of Jamestown, New York.
One classic episode, Lucy Does a TV Commercial, featured Lucy promoting a health product called Vitamia Tevegamin. As she tries to film the commercial, Lucy becomes increasingly tipsy because the tonic contains 23% alcohol, leading to a series of hilarious moments. Although it's not clear what happened with the actual ad in the story, it's assumed that they used the one successful take Lucy managed to get. Interestingly, the liquid used in filming was apple pectin, which Lucille Ball found very unpleasant to drink in large amounts. Another famous episode is Job Switching, where Lucy and Ethel switch roles with their husbands, Ricky and Fred, to prove that housework is just as challenging as any other job. The men struggle with household chores while Lucy and Ethel get jobs at a candy factory, resulting in the well-known scene where they can't keep up with the chocolates on a conveyor belt, leading to chaotic and hilarious attempts to hide the candy. In Hollywood at last, the Ricardos and Mertzes visit Los Angeles while Ricky is filming a movie. Lucy, Ethel, and Fred go to the Brown Derby restaurant to see celebrities. When Lucy spots William Holden and Eve Arden, she becomes starstruck and stares at Holden through a potted plant, which leads to a memorable scene of Lucy awkwardly trying to get his attention. Another notable episode is The Tour, where Lucy and Ethel take a bus tour of Beverly Hills to see stars' homes. Lucy ends up sneaking into Richard Widmark's house to steal a grapefruit, and it's a fun fact that Lucille Ball's real house was used for location shots. In Lucy and Superman, Lucy wants to impress her friend Carolyn Appleby by promising that Superman would attend Little Ricky's birthday party. When the real Superman, played by George Reeves, can't make it, Lucy tries to impersonate him, ending up locked on the balcony dressed as Superman, until the real Superman arrives to save her. In Lucy Visits Grauman's and its follow-up Lucy and John Wayne, Lucy and Ethel have a hilarious misadventure involving John Wayne's footprints. While visiting Grauman's Chinese theater, Lucy persuades Ethel to help her take John Wayne's cement footprints as a souvenir. They end up breaking the cement block at their hotel, and the police threaten to prosecute if they don't return it intact. To solve the problem, Ricky convinces John Wayne to make a new set, or several, to replace the broken ones. Lucy Goes to the Hospital is another unforgettable episode. After rehearsing thoroughly for the birth of little Ricky, chaos ensues when the real moment arrives. Despite all their preparations, when Lucy announces, it's time, the entire group scrambles in confusion and even forgets Lucy herself, the most important part of the delivery. In Lucy and Harpo Marx, Lucy pretends to be several movie stars, including Clark Gable, Marlon Brando, and Harpo Marx, to impress her friend Carolyn Appleby, who has poor eyesight. The charade is going well until the real Harpo Marx shows up, leading to a hilarious mirror routine where Lucy and Harpo try to mimic each other's movements. In In Palm Springs, Lucy and Ethel decide to take a trip to Palm Springs after arguments with their husbands, Ricky and Fred. Both couples eventually realize how much they miss each other despite their disagreements. A touching moment in the episode features Rock Hudson, who shares a heartfelt story with them that helps bring about reconciliation. There is also a fun scene where Lucy tries to trick Ricky with a coin toss, using the same method she used to convince him to marry her in the first place. The episode, Lucy Tells the Truth, revolves around a bet that requires Lucy to go 24 hours without telling a lie. During a visit to Carolyn Appleby's home, Ethel takes advantage of the bet by pushing Lucy to criticize Carolyn's new furniture and answer her personal questions honestly. The bet eventually backfires, as Lucy becomes brutally honest with Ricky and Fred, pointing out their flaws. Things escalate when Lucy lies about being able to speak Italian and ends up in an uncomfortable position as an assistant to an Italian knife thrower. At the end of I Love Lucy, Lucille Ball and Daisy Arnaz offered William Frawley and Vivian Vance the opportunity to star in their own spin-off show featuring Fred and Ethel Mertz. While Frawley was open to putting aside his differences with Vance for the opportunity, Vance declined the offer, feeling that their characters would not work well without the Ricardos and not wanting to continue working with Frawley. After I Love Lucy, Frawley joined the cast of My Three Sons, a popular TV sitcom that aired on ABC and later on CBS. He played Michael Francis Bub O'Casey, the live-in grandfather and housekeeper for the family. The show, which began in 1960, starred Fred McMurray as a widower, raising his three sons. On My Three Sons, Frawley experienced a different filming process compared to I Love Lucy. The production schedule was arranged around Fred McMurray's availability, with McMurray filming all his scenes in two separate blocks each season, totaling just 65 working days. 
As a result, Frawley and the rest of the cast often had to film scenes without McMurray, which Frawley found uncomfortable after his experience of filming. In sequence on I Love Lucy, personal life. In his personal life, William Frawley married fellow vaudeville performer Edna Louise Bloat in 1914. The couple formed an act called Frawley and Louise, combining light comedy, singing, dancing, and playful dialogue. Their performances took them across the United States, gaining recognition for their comedic timing and stage presence. However, the couple separated in 1921 and divorced in 1927. The reasons for their separation aren't extensively documented, but the demanding nature of their careers and personal differences likely contributed. They did not have any children. Edna Louise Bloat, who became Edna Frawley after marrying William, was an accomplished performer in her own right. Her career primarily revolved around the vaudeville circuit, a popular form of entertainment that included various acts like comedy, music, and dance. Vaudeville was a competitive and demanding environment, requiring performers to adapt and maintain high energy levels. Edna played an important role in their act, which was well regarded in the entertainment community. After their divorce, Edna's career continued, although detailed records of her professional life afterward are scarce. She remained connected to the entertainment industry in some capacity, though her path diverged from Williams. In the 1960s, she reappeared in Williams' life in a dramatic episode of This Is Your Life, a show that brought people from the guest's past to celebrate their life and career. This reunion occurred during a challenging time for William, as he was dealing with health and personal struggles. The event highlighted unresolved feelings and added emotional complexity to the experience. William Frawley's brother, Paul Frawley, also pursued acting with some Broadway credits and a few film appearances. Though he never reached the same level of fame as William, William Frawley was well known for being a tough guy to work with, and his reputation wasn't helped by his struggles with alcohol. His short temper got him into trouble more than once. One big incident happened back in 1928 when he was fired from the Broadway show That's My Baby, after he punched actor Clifton Webb in the nose. In the last year of his life, Frawley made two TV appearances. On May 3, 1965, he showed up on the panel show I've Got a Secret, where the contestants had to guess that Frawley was the first person to sing the song My Melancholy Baby in 1912. He had also performed this song on TV in a 1958 episode of the Lucy Desi Comedy Hour, titled Lucy Goes to Sun Valley. Frawley's last time on screen was on October 25, 1965, when he had a short cameo in Lucille Ball's second TV sitcom, The Lucy Show. In the episode called Lucy and the Countess Have a Horse Guest, Frawley played a horse trainer. Lucille Ball's character even comments, saying, You know, he reminds me of someone I used to know, which was a fun reference to their time together on I Love Lucy. Vivian Vance, who was mostly gone from the show by that time, did not appear in the episode. William Frawley had a tough personal life, and his struggles affected his time on set. Known for playing the grumpy landlord Fred Mertz, Frawley had a difficult history that many people didn't know about. He dealt with alcohol addiction, which was no secret in Hollywood. He also faced career setbacks, went through a divorce, and had a bleak outlook on his future before landing his role on I Love Lucy. The turning point came when Daisy Arnaz, who co-produced I Love Lucy with his wife Lucille Ball, gave Frawley the chance to play Fred Mertz. But there were strict rules. If Frawley's drinking caused problems, he would get three chances. The first issue would lead to a warning, the second would bring consequences, and the third would mean he was fired. Frawley accepted these terms and managed to play Fred Mertz for the show's entire six-year run, which had 180 episodes. To help deal with his withdrawal symptoms and keep up his performance, Frawley often put his hands in his pockets to hide any shakiness from alcohol withdrawal. Even with his efforts, Frawley's addiction still affected his life and career. After I Love Lucy, he took on another important role in the show My Three Sons. Unfortunately, his drinking continued to cause problems like forgetting his lines and having trouble staying alert. His health got worse, and he eventually passed away from a heart attack in 1966. Frawley's story shows that behind the success, many people face tough personal struggles that can be hard to see. William Frawley had a reputation for having a very difficult relationship with his on-screen wife, Vivian Vance. Although they appeared to have great chemistry as the charming Mertzes on I Love Lucy, the reality was quite different. There was a lot of tension between them off-screen, Frawley's problems weren't just about his personal life. His behavior and attitude often created issues with his colleagues. 
One interesting story comes from actor Tim Considine, who worked with Frawley on the show My Three Sons. During a visit from a lieutenant general and his adjutant, Frawley was asked about Vance. In a surprising move, he reportedly used a crude and offensive term to describe her, which really showed how much animosity existed between the two actors. The tensions between Frawley and Vance were well known. Greg Oppenheimer, the son of I Love Lucy, producer Jess Oppenheimer, shared in his book that things started off well between Frawley and Vance, but that changed after Vance made a hurtful comment about Frawley's age. Frawley took this remark to heart and began to use insults in his character's lines aimed at Vance as a way to retaliate. Daisy Arnaz, who co-produced I Love Lucy, also noted that Frawley had issues with Vance from the start, even criticizing her casting and acting skills. However, Arnaz pointed out that Vance didn't actually hold any hard feelings toward Frawley. Frawley's troubles weren't limited to just his rocky relationship with Vance. He struggled with alcoholism, which affected his performance on My Three Sons and how he interacted with others on set. Considine mentioned that Frawley would often fall asleep during scenes, which forced the writers to change the scripts to keep him engaged. Audrey Kupferberg, co-author of Meet the Mertzes, the life stories of I Love Lucy's Other Couple, described Frawley as a rough and mean man who battled serious alcohol problems. She criticized the way Frawley was depicted in the 2021 film Being the Ricardos, saying that it made him seem much softer than he really was. Sadly, William Frawley passed away from a heart attack on March 3, 1966, while walking along Hollywood Boulevard, just five days after celebrating his 79th birthday. Desi Arnaz was deeply affected by Frawley's passing. He took out a full-page ad in various trade papers to say goodbye, writing, Buenas noches, amigo. Frawley's funeral saw many of his close friends and colleagues, including Fred McMurray and Don Federson, who produced My Three Sons, serving as pallbearers alongside Arnaz. Lucille Ball shared her sadness about his death, saying that she had lost one of her dearest friends and that show business had lost one of the greatest character actors ever. Frawley was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located at 6,322 Hollywood Boulevard, as a lasting tribute to his impact on the entertainment world. William Frawley is buried at the San Fernando Mission Cemetery, located in Mission Hills, Los Angeles. To honor his significant contributions to the movie industry, he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 6,322 Hollywood Boulevard on February 8, 1960. His legacy continues to be celebrated at the Lucille Ball Daisy Arnaz Center in Jamestown, New York, where visitors can see his famous hippity-hoppity frog costume from a beloved episode of I Love Lucy. In March 2012, both Frawley and his co-star Vivian Vance were inducted into the Television Academy Hall of Fame, recognizing their impact on television. The story of how Daisy Arnaz chose Frawley to play Fred Mertz in I Love Lucy was brought to life in the stage comedy I Love Lucy, a funny thing happened on the way to the sitcom. This play was written by Greg Oppenheimer, the son of Jess Oppenheimer, who created and produced I Love Lucy. It premiered in Los Angeles on July 12, 2018, and was recorded in front of a live audience for public radio and online distribution. In this performance, Sarah Drew played Lucille Ball, and Oscar Nunez took on the role of Daisy Arnaz. In August 2020, BBC Radio 4 aired a serialized version in the UK called Lucy Loves Daisy, a funny thing happened on the way to the sitcom. This version featured Stacey Keach as William Frawley, Anne Hetch as Lucille Ball, and Wilmer Valderrama as Daisy Arnaz. Frawley has been portrayed in various adaptations about the lives of Lucy and Desi. He was first depicted by John Wheeler in the television movie Lucy and Daisy Before the Laughter. More recently, J.K. Simmons took on the role of Frawley in the 2021 film Being the Ricardos, a performance that earned him an Academy Award nomination. William Frawley, known for his role as Fred Mertz, is remembered not just for his performances but also for the personal struggles he faced during and after the show. His habit of keeping his hands in his pockets was linked to his battle with alcohol addiction, which he tried to hide while still delivering impressive performances on screen. Despite dealing with many challenges in his career and personal life, Frawley was given an important chance to shine on I Love Lucy a significant opportunity made possible by Daisy Arnaz. The relationship between Frawley and his on-screen wife, Vivian Vance, was often quite tense. This led to a well-known feud that affected how they interacted with each other both during filming and outside of work. 
Their disagreements were often reflected in the humorous yet sometimes sharp exchanges their characters had on the show. This tension, combined with Frawley's personal struggles, creates a complex picture of the man behind the beloved character of Fred Mertz. Overall, the legacy of I Love Lucy continues to connect with audiences today, showcasing the lasting charm of its characters and the resilience of the people who brought them to life. The impact of mid-20th century sitcoms like I Love Lucy has been profound, leaving a significant imprint on television and comedy. These shows not only changed the entertainment landscape, but also influenced how humor and family life were depicted on screen. The groundbreaking nature of I Love Lucy set a high standard for television comedy that many shows would aspire to reach. It was one of the first programs to focus on a married couple as the central characters and utilized a multi-camera setup with a live studio audience. This innovative format became a blueprint for many future sitcoms. The combination of physical comedy and clever dialogue brought a fresh energy to television. Lucille Ball's portrayal of Lucy Ricardo became iconic, showcasing her unique ability to blend slapstick humor with genuine emotional depth. This remarkable talent resonated deeply with audiences, establishing a new benchmark for comedic performance. Following the success of I Love Lucy, other sitcoms like The Honeymooners, Leave It to Beaver, and The Dick Van Dyke Show continued to expand the possibilities of television comedy. These shows often depicted idealized versions of American family life, intertwining humor with moral lessons. They offered viewers an escape from the challenges of everyday life, creating a shared cultural experience through engaging and heartwarming storytelling. The influence of these sitcoms goes beyond their innovative comedic techniques. They shaped the way future television shows were created, establishing templates for character development, plot structure, and comedic timing. The success of these early sitcoms also opened doors for more diverse and complex portrayals of family dynamics and personal relationships in television. Despite the cheerful and funny personas that actors embodied in these classic shows, many of them faced personal challenges that were hidden from the public. The actors who brought these cherished characters to life often had intricate and difficult lives off-screen. For example, William Frawley, known for his role as Fred Mertz, struggled with alcohol addiction throughout his career. This personal battle stood in stark contrast to the jovial and easygoing image he projected on television. Similarly, Lucille Ball, despite her tremendous success and beloved status, encountered her own set of challenges. Her turbulent marriage to Daisy Arnaz and the pressures she faced in maintaining her career in a rapidly evolving industry were not always visible to her fans. The gap between their public images and private realities serves as a reminder of the often unseen struggles that actors faced even while they entertained millions. These stories highlight the fact that behind the laughter and charm of television's most beloved characters, there can be significant personal strife. The skill of actors in creating memorable roles often conceals the complexities of their real lives, reminding us of the stark difference between their on-screen personas and their personal realities. William Frawley's life was a mix of impressive accomplishments and tough challenges. He is best known for his role as Fred Mertz on I Love Lucy, where he brought a special blend of humor and heart to the screen. His work in the sitcom set a high bar for comedy, influencing many shows that followed. However, beneath the laughter, Frawley faced significant struggles, especially his battle with alcohol addiction. This personal challenge often contrasted with the cheerful persona he displayed on television, highlighting the unseen difficulties that many actors deal with behind the scenes. Despite these hardships, Frawley showed a lot of resilience, sticking with his role for the entire run of I Love Lucy, and even finding success in other shows like My Three Sons. His story reminds us that while actors like Frawley can bring so much joy and laughter to our lives, they often have their own battles to fight. In the end, his legacy lives on not just through the laughter he created, but also as a reminder that everyone has their struggles, even those who entertain us the most.